Hey everybody, how's it going? So this week AMD announced FSR 3.0 uh, at GDC and I've had a lot of people in the comments of my last video asking me about it and if it will show up on the Steam Deck. So in this video I wanted to cover what it is, how it works, and if it's going to actually come to the Steam Deck. And don't worry, I've got you covered with all of it. So first off, what is FSR and why is it important? Uh, FSR stands for Fidelity FX Super Resolution, and it's an open source AMD technology, and it allows games to render at a lower resolution and then have that low resolution image scaled in a way that preserves detail and doesn't look too scaled. Now, this is useful if you have a low power GPU, if you have a high resolution screen, or if you want to reduce lag when it comes to scaling a low resolution image to your high res screen. So suffice it to say, there's a lot of reasons you would want to use something like FSR. Now, if you're familiar with DLSS, which is NVIDIA's uh, resolution scaling or image sampling system, um, it's similar to that. On the Steam Deck, for example, uh, you can use FSR 1.0 as part of the uh, performance toolkit that's available in the quick access menu. And that's a really great uh, option if you want to, you know, re scale up your image to a 1080p screen and let the deck render at its native resolution of like 720p. The problem with FSR 1.0 is that it can introduce scaling artifacts and it can be quite jittery and produce almost unusable results in some scenarios. It was a great first attempt, but there was much headroom for improvement. So FSR 1.0 is basically a scaling algorithm that uses information in the current frame in order to preserve detail. Uh, FSR 2.0, on the other hand, is a temporal scaling algorithm. It samples information from the previous frames, including the current one, in order to uh, provide a more stable and consistent uh, scaling procedure over time. FSR 2.0 is a superior algorithm, but it does have a few drawbacks. The biggest one being that, uh, unlike the first attempt with this technology, uh, games have to specifically include support for FSR 2.0. Uh, this explains why FSR 1.0 is available in the uh, Steam Deck's Quick Access Performance menu, but 2.0 is not available. Games essentially have to implement this technology in order for them to take advantage of it, unlike FSR 1.0, where you could just turn it on and it would start uh, working. That isn't to say that the deck doesn't support FSR 2.0 though. FSR 2.0 is available on the Steam Deck, but only in games that support it. Deathloop, for example, supports both FSR 1.0 and 2.0 natively, uh, and it does a good job with uh, with upscaling using both technologies. So now that we have the background, let's get to FSR 3.0. Now this week, AMD officially introduced FSR 3.0 to the public uh, at Game Developers Conference. While we don't have all the answers to our questions yet, we do have some key insights and I thought I would go over them here. First, AMD is hoping for two times the performance here over FSR 2.0 and the way they're doing that is interesting. They're introducing interpolated frames into FSR 3.0. Uh, interpolated frames, if you don't know, is where the uh, algorithm basically generates uh, an in-between frame uh, and it basically guesses what the next frame is going to look like. Now, I'll be interested to see how this actually performs. Uh, interpolation can be quite hit or miss. If you've ever seen like a uh, fake slow-mo where someone, uh, where they filmed a video at normal frame rate and then they tried to slow it down by basically morphing between two frames, that's interpolation. But AMD has also uh, really focused heavily on reducing latency with this version of uh, FSR as well. So uh, reducing latency is key for gaming and I'm, Going to be really excited to see how FSR 3.0 tackles all of this. But I think the most important thing about FSR, and it's going to be key for its success, is the fact that uh, AMD is releasing FSR 3.0 under the, a free and open source license. The MIT license. This is a license that's going to enable developers to quickly adopt this technology and include it with their games. Because MIT, for all of its pitfalls and all of the arguments that I have against the use of MIT, for something like this, where it's a technology that's going to be included in lots of different uh, applications, I think uh, MIT makes sense here. So the question is, will FSR come to the Steam Deck? Uh, unequivocally, the answer is yes, FSR will be uh, coming to the Steam Deck, but it's only going to be available on the Steam Deck when games specifically implement it. The performance menu probably won't have support for FSR 3.0, 
Uh, this is going to be up to games to install, but the drivers for SteamOS for the uh, Aerith APU will support uh, FSR 3.0 at some point down the line, and games will be able to take advantage of that. Uh, and I'm excited to see that because FSR 3.0 seems like it could be a game changer on the Steam Deck, allowing games to render at something like, you know, 30 or 40 FPS and be upscaled to 1080p on your television. I, I think that has some huge potential. Well, those are my thoughts on FSR 3.0. I would love to hear what you think about any of this. Leave me a comment down below and let me know. Um, I, I love hearing your guys' feedback. Yeah, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can support the show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon. You can use the links below to become a YouTube member or support the show on ViewSync. Uh, I think that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.